Hey guys, what is up? It is me, Pager here, once again with another video on The Flash Season 3. So this is going to be my review for episode uh, 12 of The Flash Season 3, otherwise entitled Untouchable. But before we go ahead, there will be spoilers within this review, so if you haven't watched the episode, go watch it, then come back to this later on, and discuss with everyone else in the comments. So obviously before we go ahead, if you do go on to enjoy the video, it would be very much appreciated if you do leave a like on it. Also let me know in the comments section below what was your favourite part of the episode and what were some parts that you didn't really like. I'd like to know what you all think. And if you are new around here, make sure to subscribe. So I really did enjoy the beginning of this episode with Wally and Barry training, which included a little race of sorts. I did like the Team Flash with like putting bets on who would win, I just thought that was a nice little addition. And actually, one thing that I was actually talking about in my trailer breakdown, I think it was, about how Barry could just phase through a building if he wanted to, you know, get ahead of someone that wouldn't be able to, actually happened in this race when Barry actually phases through the building to beat Wally, who was most likely going to beat him if it was just, you know, continuing to run in a straight line. So I thought that was cool, and it really did set up the whole, like, sort of training part of this episode where Wally wanted to learn how to phase. Now, Iris worrying about all the events leading up to her death was a nice thing to have in this episode because it's really what should happen. I don't think Iris should be like she was last episode, apart from like that bit towards the end where she was just going around saying, oh, I'm invincible, nothing worries me now. It makes sense that she'd be worrying about her death that's upcoming. Now, the police captain from Flashpoint, otherwise known as Julio Mendez, was killed by the villain for this week, otherwise known as Clive Yorkin. Now, I actually thought this was a really good story for this episode where the cops from Flashpoint are being hunted down by Clive Yorkin, who we discover is one of the metahumans that uh, Julian Albert, or Julian Dawn, might I say, created, or Dr. Alchemy, which obviously means that Joe is in danger, but Joe gives that little uh, thing where, well, I'm just a cop, so every single time I leave the house, I'm in danger. Like, if I was always scared, I'd just be inside all day, so I guess that sort of made sense. But as I said, Alchemy, or Julian, did create this metahuman, Clive Yorkin, so now, after this guy, there's only one metahuman husk left from the ones that they said that they found earlier this season. So it is going to be interesting to see who is the remaining husk. That's because they are sort of like hinting, oh, it's, there's one husk left. Now, this could mean there's one more filler episode to come with this remaining metahuman husk. Or it could mean that this remaining husk is someone pretty big. So I'm excited to see what they do with it. Now, was I the only one that found the scene at Jitters with Cecile and her daughter extremely funny? I just thought it how like they have no idea that Barry and Wally are the two speedsters and they're trying to compare who is better. I just thought it was funny, especially when Wally's like, yeah, 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 tell me more about what you like about Kid Flash. Uh, yeah, keep telling me. I love when my ego is is filled with joy. I thought that was just hilarious. Especially when Joe's put in the sticky spot of uh, trying to decide whether he likes Kid Flash or The Flash better. I thought, yeah, just a great scene. But it was good that Iris finally told Joe that she is meant to die from what Barry saw when he got uh, pushed to the future. And Joe's reaction was perfect. I think that's exactly how he should have responded. I think anyone who was like Joe, like the, the father, would respond. So I think they did that well. And it will be interesting to see in the next few episodes if Joe tries to interfere and try to change Iris's future as well. Now, Iris getting touched by Clive York, and I don't think it was necessary in this episode. Like, they really just steered away from it being Joe. But, I, as I said in my trailer breakdown and another video I did leading up for this episode, I think it was just sort of like a nod, in some cases, you could even say it's an Easter egg, to the comics where it's believed that Clive York and did kill Iris West when she actually did die. But later it was revealed that he, uh, Clive York and just, like, witnessed the death and it was actually reverse Flash that killed her. But seeing Caitlin having to use her Killer Frost abilities in order to stop the spread of the decay was pretty cool, but also having to see her fight off Killer Frost taking control was also pretty cool. I think it's inevitable that Killer Frost is going to come out again, but I guess the big question is when. Now, obviously, Barry and Wally, like, mentoring and stuff was one of the big parts of this episode, and Barry having that, like, heart-to-heart -heart talk with Wally was nice in the episode, seeing that Wally feels like he failed, uh, with Clive York and getting, uh, Iris in this, uh, predicament with her arm being all decayed, and it really does carry on throughout the whole episode where Wally does build more confidence towards, you know, right towards the end. But it wouldn't be a Flash episode without Cisco vibing, so it was cool to, uh, for him to vibe to the Flashpoint universe to find Yorkin's next target. Even though it, was, it wasn't the best scene, I guess you could say, like, it would have been cool if they had, like, another Easter egg with another character or something like that. Like, maybe if Eddie Thorne showed up or something, that would have been pretty cool. But regardless, going somewhere else with Cisco's vibes is always a nice thing to see. 
Now, as I said, with Caitlyn trying to use her powers, we do see her starting to go Killer Frost, and even Killer Frost takes control for a limited amount of time. But with Julinger helping her come back to the side of good, it really does set up some stuff with them in the future, even towards the end of the episode when they go out for a drink. So I don't know if necessarily Julian and Caitlyn will become a couple, but I think they will become a close-knit unit, uh, especially towards the end of the season. If Caitlyn does go Killer Frost, we don't know if Julian is going to go back to being Dr. Alchemy. We never know if he might get sucked back into that. So it would be pretty uh, interesting if these two characters do end up becoming bad guys again. Now, Barry vibrating the train fast enough that it could phase through the rubble that Clive Yorkin created was sick. Now, I think we saw that in the Flash comics in DC Rebirth, if my memory serves me correct. And it was with a plane, from what I remember. Like, the Flash ends up on a plane, and he manages to vibrate it so it can go through a bridge. I think that's what happens. But regardless, awesome scene. And obviously, early in the episode, we had Julian telling Barry about how his blood could sort of negate the abilities of Yorkin. So we see Wally do that, sort of phase through with his hand cut open, so... It goes into Yorkin's bloodstream. And we also did see Wally getting better at delivering the comedic lines. Wally should be a bit of a more comedic character. I don't think Keenan Lonsdale is the best comedic actor uh, or the best at delivering the comedic lines, but I think, you know, anyone can do it. Like, if you just keep working at it, and I think if he, by the end of the season, I think he'll be very, very good at it. But the end scene, wow, with Wally phasing, finally, you know, gets his hand through the, the wood. We'll have to see if he can get his whole body through eventually. But then we get Jesse Quick showing up through a breach and we find out that Harry has been taken by Gorilla Grodd and taken to Gorilla City. So that is the setup for the two-part Gorilla City storyline, which unfortunately we will not be seeing for two weeks. They're taking a one-week break for The Flash, which sucks. I think Legends and Supergirl are taking a week's break as well next week. Arrow is still on. I'm 99% sure with that. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but I'm pretty sure I'm right with that. It's a bit unfortunate, but it's only one week's break. Like, it's not like it's three or four, which The Flash has done sometimes. So, be grateful it's only one. But overall, I really enjoyed this episode. It was filler, but it was a very enjoyable filler episode. I really did like Barry and Wally's um, relationship throughout this episode. Uh, Barry mentoring Wally, which was something that I really wanted to see from the get-go when we got back from the mid-season uh, break. But the, it's a good start that we got it in this episode. I didn't necessarily think Iris had to be in that position where she was touched by Clive York. Like, I really could have been any other character. But I guess they really wanted Wally and Barry to be fighting as hard for the same person. And really, the only person that could have been was Iris. And really, all I can think about now is Gorilla Grodd, Gorilla City, and meeting Earth 2 Harrison Wells again. It's going to be awesome. There's going to be other surprises within that two-part storyline. I think those two episodes could possibly be the best of the season. So get excited. I don't know if they're going to release a trailer for it. They might leave it for a week and then release a trailer. But if they do, I will have my trailer breakdown out, uh, out later on, sorry. So be out on the be on the lookout for that, might I say, uh, later on. But thanks for watching, guys. If you did enjoy the video, it would be very much appreciated. If you could leave a like on it, let me know in the comment section below what was your favorite part of the episode. Are you hyped for the Gorilla City two-part story? There's going to be some characters dropping by that we have met and haven't met yet. So... Get excited and subscribe if you are new. I'll catch you later, guys. Goodbye.